This is Prime 7 Local News with Madeleine Collignon, Kenny Hinckley and meteorologist Carl Linders with your local weather. Now, Prime 7 Local News at 6. Tonight, how the border could win a slice of a $20 billion defence contract. Indi MP Cathy McGowan could become kingmaker as the High Court turns Parliament on its head. Mourners pay tribute to a hard-working young man who lost his life to road fatigue. And we've seen some thunderstorms and showers across the region, so how much rain did you get at your place? I'll tell you soon. Good evening. A border company could play a key part in producing the next generation of combat vehicles for the Australian Army. A British-based multinational defence giant is bidding to replace the entire fleet of light-armoured vehicles, the biggest program of its kind in our military history. If they win, many of the intricate power and electrical systems would be built right here. It's been described as the most lethal modern eight combat reconnaissance vehicle in the world. If BAE Systems win the right to build hundreds of these for the Australian Army, key power systems, electrical wiring harnesses and electromechanical subsystems would be built in Albury. Local company Millspec Manufacturing is a long-term partner of BAE and will build the parts. We are unique in that we have this, the sheet metal, the CNC machining, we have the painting, the fabrication, the assembly and we can build the wiring harness, we can test the electronics and it can leave here as a fully serviceable piece of equipment and it never leaves the building. What it means for the border in terms of dollars isn't known, but it would mean as many as 20 new full-time jobs. Millspec would install new high-tech equipment, enhancing its reputation as a major player in global defence manufacturing. We've got stuff in aeroplanes, we've got stuff in submarines, we've got stuff in land vehicles, we've got stuff orbiting the world. Everything in this infantry fighting vehicle is made in Australia. All the subsystems made right here at Millspec. If BAE Systems Australia win the tender, they'll be working on another 300 tanks for the Australian Army. These water cool permanent magnet alternators are just one part, which will be built in Albury. Four will soon be sent to Germany for field trials. Absolutely, jobs, uh, jobs in Australia, jobs in Albury, Wodonga, and uh, intellectual property that really secures the future of manufacturing. We also need rural and regional manufacturing for defence industries. Everything can't happen, and nor should it happen, in the crowded capital cities. BAE and Millspec will know by the end of the year if they win the contract, which analysts say is worth around $20 billion. Eleanor Tabone, Prime 7 News. Cathy McGowan could play an even more significant role in Parliament in coming weeks following a decision by the High Court today. The Court ruled that five members of Parliament, including Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce, should be disqualified from Parliament because of their dual citizenship. Helen Ballard has spoken to Cathy McGowan. And Helen, will Miss McGowan's role change in any way? Well, Cathy McGowan told me a short time ago that it was business as usual and she was not comfortable with the title of kingmaker despite the government just losing its one seat majority. And I will, have, will continue to give, should it, should it be necessary, uh, confidence in the government. So that's the way I've been working for the last uh, actual four years of being a Member of Parliament. So from my perspective, nothing really changes. Cathy McGowan says she'll also consider every bill on its merits and as she said when she was elected uh, for the second time, there'll be no deals, Kenny. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, some interesting times ahead indeed. Murray Goulburn has announced plans to sell the company to Canadian company Saputo for $1.3 billion. The deal would include the sale of the dairy factory at Tam Gangbalanga, which has operated for 124 years. Its milk production stopped in July with 60 workers losing their jobs. Another 60 employees have jobs until June next year making cream cheese. The sale to Saputo has given the National Union of Workers new hope the factory may remain open. After this review that's just happened, if they decide that they're not going to um, move the cream cheese production to Cobram, it will stay at Kiwa, is what I understand. So you haven't given up hope yet of those 60 jobs remaining in Tangambalanga? Absolutely not. We hope that they'll, they'll still remain. The proposed sale to the Canadian dairy processor will depend on approval from shareholders and the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission.
Hundreds of more than mourners gathered in Wodonga today to bid farewell to Christian Baker, who was killed in a car crash near Barranduda earlier this month. The popular 18-year-old has been remembered as a hard-working, bubbly young man. It was an emotional day for family and friends of Christian Baker as they farewelled the popular teen. Loved ones embraced each other, many still in shock over the young man's death. He was always very bright. He was one of those people that you'd see and he was very bubbly all the time. You know, he never catch him being down about something. He lived around the corner from me and he used to come visit me every Sunday, which was very hard not seeing him on a daily basis because that's what we did. We did everything together pretty much and it's been very different without him. The 18-year-old was killed after he lost control of his car along the Kiwa Valley Highway near Barranduda and it slammed into a tree, bursting into flames. It's believed fatigue caused the crash. The ambitious teen was balancing three jobs at the time to save enough money to buy his first house. I think it's important um, for young people to remember that working hard is important, but keeping a balance in your lifestyle uh, is also important to make sure you get the right rest. To honour his memory, a clothing label has been launched in his name called Ambitious Co. The 18-year-old had worked on the project before he died. His friends now hope it'll create a lasting legacy. It's easy to forget people and leave them on the mantelpiece, but uh, with what we're doing with the clothing label, it'll keep Christian's memory alive and active, and it'll be something that everybody can be a part of. Josh Ribrich, Prime 7 News. Police are appealing for public help to find William Smith. A warrant is out for the 23-year-old's arrest after he failed to front court over serious assault charges. He is known to visit Wodonga and surrounding areas. Police urge anyone who sees him to call Crime Stoppers. Businesses in an industrial street in Wodonga are at war with the council over parking. Inspectors have begun enforcing a rule that cars cannot be parked on nature strips. But those who work at Kendall Street say the rule is stupid and could cost a life. It's a tight squeeze in Kendall Street. Trucks and excavators go up and down here all day. It's tough when there are cars parked on both sides of the street. To be honest, it's a bit of a joke really, I think. Businesses try to make the street less congested by parking on the grass. Technically, as of this point here, this car is illegal. So this car, that car, they're illegally parked. We are too far out onto the net median strip. Wodonga Council parking inspectors began giving out infringement notices on Tuesday in a crackdown on the rule. This one was a warning and had no amount to pay, but the business probably won't be so lucky next time. Parking on the nature strip in Kendall Street might be technically illegal, but according to the traders along here, it's a whole lot safer, avoiding many a near miss. Trevor Kalia is undeterred and will keep parking his cars here. Not really, because I'd prefer to get fined than have a car taken out by a truck like this one's going to. What's your greatest fear? Um, side swiping a car and, and possibly hitting someone that's coming out of the car, to be honest. Wodonga Council said in a statement it had a legal obligation to enforce road safety rules. Requests to construct parking within the nature strip will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Helen Bellard, Prime 7 News. Details for a proposed cinema centre to be built at Wodonga's Junction Place have been revealed. The $32 million three-storey complex is part of the $200 million Station 73 development and could open as early as mid-2019 following approvals and construction. It'll include nine state-of-the-art theatres, a skating rink, 10-pin bowling alley and restaurants as well. It's time now for a quick check of the weather with Liz Gwynn. And Liz, it was a pretty active night across the region last night. Yeah, there was certainly some really unsettled weather there, Kenny, and we had some really welcome rain in parts as well. Hello, everyone. Well, it was a fine day to end the working week today. Very different from yesterday afternoon and evening when those thunderstorms and showers rolled in. Now, in the past 24 hours, some of you got two millimetres at best. The standout was Yakin Danda, who got eight millimetres of rain in the gauge. Bright got two 
two mils and there was also Rocky Point that got five millimetres. Now it was a low of seven degrees in Wangaratta before 22. It was cooler along the Alpine peaks with a low of three in Falls Creek before a top of 11 and a 10 the top there in Mount Hotham. Now looking further ahead it will be cooling right down on Monday with temperatures in the Alpine areas actually staying under 10 degrees and 20 in other areas. So guys I'll have some of those details straight after spot for you. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Thank you. Liz. Still to come in Prime 7 News, the stoush over a new 24-hour car wash in Corowa. And one of Australia's most recognisable broadcasters was on the border today. We'll tell you why. Stay in touch 24-7 with Prime 7 News. An icon of Australia's media industry was in Albury today to address delegates at an annual aged care conference. Ida Buttrose took time out of her busy schedule to dispel some of the myths surrounding ageing and speak to people on the border about a disease close to her heart. Ida Buttrose is easily one of Australia's most recognisable media personalities. Not only has she been an industry trailblazer and the author of several bestsellers, she is also an ambassador for many national organisations such as Alzheimer's Australia and the Macular Disease Foundation. There aren't many places she can travel without drawing attention. If you're going to be well known, this is a great country in which to be well known because Australians are so friendly. And because people feel they know me, it's always very friendly. Ms Buttrose was in Aubrey today as the keynote speaker for the United Protestants Association State Conference. Her message was about the need for change in Australia's aged care system and the importance of physical exercise for older Australians. There are so many more people with dementia who will be going into aged care or will, will need home care packages. I could see how it affected my father. I, I, I know the impact it has. Ida Buttrose is just one of many speakers to address more than 130 delegates from around Victoria and New South Wales at a conference which aims to highlight the concerns facing the nation's aged care system. Well, the changes that are coming are a um, mix of uh, demand from a growing older population and particularly here on the border. The conference, which continues tomorrow, will look at ways to encourage more people to work in the aged care industry to meet the demand. Jessica Gledhill, Prime 7 News. Vet students at the University of Sydney are shining a light on rural and remote mental health, releasing a risque nude calendar. They say farmers do it tough in secret, and the funny photos help draw eyes to the cause. Poses struck with furry friends, vet students frolicking free. These snaps didn't leave much to the imagination. I've uh, had a few comments from friends. The bunch from the University of Sydney stripped bare, all in the name of art. They're releasing a nude calendar, raising money for rural and remote mental health. We're trying to shed our clothes to shed the stigma around mental health. But they also shed their inhibitions. Was it weird being in the nude around your mates? At first it was, it was a little bit weird, but by the end of the day, you'd been nude so many times that... <laughs> I had to convince my mum. To get off the bucket list. The cause is close to the student body's heart. The rate of suicide is four times higher in country communities. Farmers that undergo maybe production losses often have no one to really turn to when, um, when these things happen. They're going through that struggle completely by themselves. The charity runs seminars reaching out and the calendar is a bit of a vet student tradition which started back in 2004. <laughs> then clothes felt weird, so... <laughs> I don't know, they're just body parts. You get, you get over it, I guess, in the end. You can purchase the calendar and support the cause on this website. Serena Nastasi, Prime 7 News. A new business venture in Corowa is causing uproar amongst the community and it hasn't even been built yet. A 24-7 car wash to be developed on the corner of John and Bow Streets has come under fire from local ratepayers over its proposed site. With more suitable locations around town, it's left many residents scratching their heads. It's one of Corowa's busiest intersections and it's about to become the site of a new 24-7 car wash. Despite objections from the local community over the location's suitability, Federation Council approved applications for the new development at a recent meeting. I use this intersection several times a day and school children travel to and fro their school on their skateboards. The car wash will be built next to the local skate park, which recently received a council grant for upgrades. 
Concerns were raised over safety for skate park users as well as waste and noise from the car wash for nearby residents. Former Corowa Mayor Fred Longemeyer was one of two councillors to vote against the project. All these things came into a position where I couldn't support it. Other councillors thought that it was a good op opportunity for another, another business in Corowa. There's now talk of a petition to change the location of the development. Well, it's now up to the council to perhaps listen to what the ratepayers and the locals are saying. Jessica Gledhill, Prime 7 News. Wangaratta RSL's headquarters for the past 65 years has today been sold for an undisclosed sum. The Reed Street building went under the hammer at lunchtime and was passed in at $780,000. It was then renegotiated and sold privately. The Wangaratta RSL will move into the old Sydney Hotel site on Templeton Street next year. Still to come on Prime 7 News, we'll preview a big weekend in cricket. And after a bumpy season, some good news for Brad Jones Racing. Provincial cricket powerhouse Belvoir have failed to take flight so far this year. The Eagles are yet to win a game in a worrying start to the season, but the club says there's no cause for panic just yet. It's still early days, but so far this season, Belvoir have really dropped the ball. They've been powerhouses in recent years in provincial cricket. They won the flag just a few years ago. So far this year, though, things haven't clicked for the boys in blue. But they're confident that first win isn't far away. Yeah, zero and three isn't ideal, but I don't know, I kind of feel like, um, you know, any other year we could be two and one fairly easily and then it's a completely different scenario. So, yeah, we need to get the ball rolling. Things aren't set to get any easier, though. Belvoir take on Talangata this weekend, who have just welcomed back one of their big names, Sri Lankan international Dilhara Lokaheric. But for Belvoir and Russell, they just need that one win to get things going. We take a lot of um, belief out of the fact that we started last year in, you know, in, in pretty similar fashion and, and in fact even worse. You know, So we know that it can turn and when it does turn you've just got to ride that momentum a little bit. In the rounds other games of interest and the undefeated Lavington host East Albury, while New City will look to continue their surprisingly strong start to the year against the hapless Raiders. Fletcher Doherty, Prime 7 News. Zach Murray has failed to continue his recent run of good form, failing to make the cut at the Queensland Open. The border golfer was given a surprise entry into the pro event after he finished a career high ninth in the West Australian Open. And despite shooting a respectable 73 today, his opening round of six over made it hard to stay with the field, ending his tournament at eight over par. Despite suffering through one of the most dramatic seasons Brad Jones Racing has ever endured, three drivers, all three of them, have made it clear today that they're not going anywhere as the V8 season nears its conclusion. Death, taxes and BJR dramas. There's been nothing surer this year and somehow things got even crazier for the border team on the Gold Coast. Fire, rain, crashes and podium finishes in what Nick Perkett has described as his craziest year in the sport by a mile. Have you ever had a year like this personally with so much going on? No way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in full on. Despite all this, all three drivers say they have no intentions of leaving the border team anytime soon. My contract is up um, you know, at the end of this year, but uh, yeah, the, the, the plan is to, to stay here. Um, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, Brad and Kim think the same. Tim Blanchard is in the same boat. I still love racing and, uh, you know, the, the cool drive car will be at Brad Jones Racing next year, that, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, I've got to talk to Brad about it, but, yeah, I still enjoy it and want to keep going, so that, that's uh, most likely what will happen. The border team have a very quick turnaround before the next round in New Zealand, and the team will be doing a rain dance of sorts, with their cars performing well in the wet over the past month. I looked at the weather, it's going to be wet, so Bathurst, the cars are rocking in the wet, Gold Coast is rocking in the wet, so we just keep praying for rain, because our cars seem to hook up really good in the rain. BJR take on the Auckland Super Sprint next weekend. Fletcher Doherty, Prime 7 News. How is the weather looking at your place this weekend? Liz will take us through the map straight after the break. Stay with us.
For a closer look at the weather forecast, we're joined once again by Liz Gwynn. So Liz, the showers might not be over this week. Yeah, that's right, Kenny. Don't pack away that umbrella just yet. Hello again, everyone. Well, we could see some showers and thunderstorms returning to our region tomorrow afternoon or evening. Now that's as this low pressure system moves across to the southeast. It should clear up by Sunday and it should be a sunny and fine day then. But by Monday and Tuesday those southerly winds are going to push into our part of the world and daytime and overnight temps will drop next week. Now it will be a cloudy but dry day tomorrow to start. That's before those possible showers and storms later in the day. A top of 26 in Benalla tomorrow after a low of 13. 26 will be the top in Wangaratta and it will be 26 also in Albury. Now looking ahead for Sunday and those showers should be clearing a really nice day so make the most of that one. Now there is the chance of those showers returning again for the start of the working week. The Bureau is predicting between 2 and 8 millimetres of rain. Temperatures could also drop as well. Look at that. So 18 the top expected for Wangaratta, 20 the top in Wagga there, 18 in Albury after a low of 10 and we get down to 17 in Beechworth. Now there's your sunrise there for you. It will be around quarter past six. So looking ahead, those showers are possible over the weekend. Pack the umbrella, but we really are bracing for that cool change, which is expected to arrive on Monday. The Bureau says there's also the thunderstorm chance and even hail we could see on Monday as well. And then temperatures should be stay, staying pretty low as well from Monday and uh, Tuesday, and the low will get down to about five degrees the average so guys it could be feeling quite fresh in some areas and don't pack away the doona just yet we'll just have to make the most of that warm weather on sunday that's thanks right. Liz. thanks and that's all we have time for tonight you can join the debate on tonight's stories on facebook and also watch tonight's top stories on our website thanks for your company coming up seven news from melbourne have a lovely weekend see you monday Bye.